So hello, John Holland. Hello, Lilio. How are you? Good, good. Thank you for accepting this interview. You're an internationally renowned psychic uh, and, and a spiritual teacher. You're the author of many bestsellers and you have a, a Hay House radio show weekly on, on the internet. Yes, absolutely. Um, so it's, it's very much an honor to be speaking with you right now and, and really discovering uh, and, and unfolding all your wisdom. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us? I, to, I think it's great that we can do it this way. I think this is great. Yeah, yeah. Thanks to the, the technology and the internet. Absolutely. Uh, so tell us, what is actually a, a psychic medium? What is mediumship? Can you tell us how it feels and what it is like? And, and, sure. and if we all have that ability. Uh, mediumship is, well, there's a difference, Lilo. There's psychic and then there's me, uh, mediumship. Every, uh, a psychic sees the energy or feels the energy around a person, their aura, from their past, their present, and their potential future. Mediums or mediumship is different. I will get information directly from people on the other side. So every medium is psychic, but not every psychic is a medium. Mm, and do we all have that capability? We all, we're, it's almost like we're all born, um, and I always say to my people, Lilo, that if, how many people have a soul? Everybody. And with that soul comes the, your soul sensitivity, which are your psychic gifts. So everyone is psychic. Some people more stronger than others, but it's like a muscle. The more you use it, the more stronger it will get. Call it psychic. Call it intuition. It's the, it's the, it's the same thing. But Mediumship, I believe you have to have the chemical and physical makeup to, to be a medium. So not everyone, like I said, every medium is psychic, but not every psychic is a medium. Mm, were, you, were, were you born with that? So, yeah, and I, t I talk about this in my first book, Born Knowing, that I wrote seven years ago. I was one of five children, and I was always the different one in the family, probably like most of your listeners. And if I was to say to your people who are watching this right now, are you the different one in your family? A lot of people would be shaking their head. And I don't know if we, we were really different. I think we were more awake, you know, Lilo. So, but I was different as a child. I knew things I couldn't possibly have known. Um, I used to see the spirit people in my bedroom, and I thought I was dreaming. I would know when people were going to surprise us by a visit, a relative out of town. So I was always like this as a child. But as a child, anytime you're different or labeled different, society makes sure that you're, you could be outcast. Um, I was called names, so I hid the ability until an automobile accident awoke those abilities many years later when I was 30 years old. You don't have to be in an accident to become psychic, but once that happened to me, it changed my life. I believe that some things are meant to happen. What you do about the situation is the free will part. Mm, that's interesting what you said, because I just interviewed uh, Robert Young, and he has that exact same experience. He became this new human being after a big major car accident. So w what happens there in that moment? W what provokes that all of a sudden shift in your abilities or this, this opening? I think it was um, my, I think my energy centers, we all have energy centers, chakras, chakras, however you want to call them. Mm -hmm. I think that they all blew open. Uh, you have energy centers in the body, a major seven of them. And I think that when that happened, it awoke uh, my energy centers um, really, really fast. And I had to, I had no problem being psychic. People would come up to me at work and I would just know things that used to just come out of my mouth. And I always tell people, don't do that anymore. Don't just walk up to someone. But I believe the trauma of the accident awoke me. And when that accident did happen, it changed my life. And when I made the positive change, that's when all the abilities started to happen. I think it was meant to happen, and I think it, it, it was time for uh, a life change. And that, and that was my wake-up call. And I talk about that in uh, Power of the Soul. Some of us get wake-up calls. You only get a few in life, but this one I listen to. And, and then you had no other choice but live those abilities and share it with the world. Yes, and I fought this ability many, many, for many years. All my friends said, you should really start seeing people, and I didn't want that. I didn't want that responsibility because people don't realize when you do this work, your life is in my hands. Very sensitive stuff. So finally, I started seeing people doing psychic work, and then two years into seeing people psychically, like you, you might come to see me to talk about your show or your work or where it might be going, and in would come your grandmother or an aunt. So... That's what happened. Two years into doing the psychic work, I must have reached another level because people on the other side started showing up. And I said, well, what is this all about? One thing led to another, and I talk about this in Power of the Soul. I believe in synchronistic events. 
when you when things are meant to happen, all these synchronistic events, my work closed, somebody wanted to rent my apartment, I got to go to England, I met someone, got to go to England. And it's funny, all the books I was reading on mediumship, when people on the other side started to show up, I started reading all these books. Why is this happening to me? How do I give off the information? What do I do with this? All the books were from England. Two weeks into reading those book, books, I stepped on a person's foot at a, uh, at, at a party, and they were from England. I got to go over there. Someone rented my apartment. My work in the States closed. So I had the time. I had someone renting my apartment. Synchronistic events one thing after the other. And that's what people need to do. Your soul is pulling you, is pulling you towards what it needs. And because we're in a society right now that's very fast paced, Lilu, they don't even, people don't even notice the signs. And there's many ways that your soul is trying to get your attention. Yeah, a lot of us have role models and we try to follow somebody else's path. But what you're saying is that we really have a unique path. Like Edgar Tolley, for example, was called to go oh. from England, go to the other coast of America to, to write his book. You, it was the opposite. It brought you back to England and suddenly something happened. Absolutely. And I keep going. I've been going back and forth to England for 13 years. And that's, it's, England is very special to me. And yes, we all have our own path. You may see someone um, who has a, you like their path that they're taking, but that's their path. Okay. You have a soul and, you know, it's got, it wants to take, it, take you where it's supposed to go. But we push away from the soul all the time. We ignore it because um, we're so caught up here in the physical world. And your soul may try to get your attention Say you're not doing well. Your soul will try to give you dreams. It'll try using your intuition. Synchronistic events will be happening. Um, and sometimes people just don't pay attention, don't pay attention. And then finally, you get a wake-up call like I did with my accident. And a wake-up call, I think, is God's way of saying, yeah. hello, are you going to listen to me this time? Why are we not listening to all those signs before and how can we open oh. to them? Some, some people forget, um, Lilo, that you have to remember that you are a soul that comes with a body, not a body that comes with a soul. That is the real world. The other side, that is the real place. This is just temporary. Um, people, don't know, people forget that they're spiritual beings. We're 50% physical, 50% spiritual. We get so caught up in the physical world with uh, the people, uh, work, children it you know it's hard to be here so some people forget that they're also a spiritual person uh, they have a spiritual energy so they don't watch the signs or they don't even know what signs to look for and that's and that's why um, I wrote the book and really you got to ask yourself what is the soul really it's you it's consciousness it's the part of you that's uh, around your body and in your body and when this vessel this body passes away that soul will continue to go on so if you look into a mirror is that really who you're seeing? Is that really you? No. The soul is you. Soul is soul is your consciousness. It's the real you. It's who you are. So what is it made of? Energy. It, it's 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 all it's 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 all energy. It's uh it's a spiritual energy. And some people, whereas some people say the soul is here in your heart and your head, I think it's all around you. So it's the soul is made up of energy. Could it be connected, therefore, to um, other energies and other people in different dimension or other lives? Is it why dead ones are crucial to, are they trying to tell us something? No, that's, I mean, um, a lot of people, when I do messages, I mean, basically people from the other side, they show up here. Um, I raise my energy level. They lower theirs, and then there's a blending process, and that's when I will hear, see, and feel information. And basically, people on the other side, they want to let you know, look, I'm still alive. I'm okay. Stop grie uh, grieving, because they want us to be here. Uh, they want us to uh, go on and to be happy. Hmm. And, and they have particular message, or their goal is just to yeah, say, listen, let go of this and play fully yes. your life. Or do they yes. also have a guidance kind of, uh, do they have also, are, they, are they also kind of some guides? Yes, the, um, some guides come through um, every once in a while when I do this work. Um, but there is guidance too. Sometimes someone may have a, um, a family issue and a grandmother may come in and give some advice. And I always joke, Lilu, and say, some people say, can my father help me with money? My, can my father help me with my finances? And then I ask the person, how was dad with his money here? And she says, he was awful. I said, wrong person to ask. 
Do you see what I mean? When, when we cross over, we don't turn into this exalted being where we know everything. Um, kind of same personality. I believe that we do go on and get better and better and then come back here and do it again. But um, some people will say, can my, can my father help me with money? If your father was bad at money, wrong person t- to call. But usually the message is, is I love you. It, it is. And uh, you can't, they can't, the people on the other side, the spirits on the other side, they can't interfere with our karmic lessons here. They can guide you, inspire you, help you to move in a certain directions, but they can't take away the karmic lessons. If you're meant to go through um, something here, your soul needs to go through it. And so you're trying to reinstore the integrity of this profession, aren't you? Yes, and I want to I want to stay grounded with this work, and I've been doing this work for like 17, 18 years now, and a lot of people find me approachable. I'm just a man. I'm just, see, Lilo, as you can see, I'm just a guy. Yeah, I can do that. And I, I, just happen to have, I just happen to have this ability, and people find me very approachable, and I always stay grounded with this. I'm not going to get all airy and spacey and... You know, and I joke with people. I don't come. I didn't come floating on a cloud in this office. I came walking in as a man. So yeah, and I will keep this work grounded because I don't want people to take metaphysics or uh, new age, which isn't really new. Uh, I don't want them to take this subject way too far. Just like people, uh, physical and spiritual, you still you still have to be here on the earth. So stay grounded with this work. Is the entity of of mediums here on this planet is is growing and evolving? What do you mean? Uh, what I mean by that is that it is, is it in your own profession, is it becoming clearer and clearer? Is there new um, visions or, or new, I don't know, new levels that you're accessing right now with the vibration on this planet? Well, um, I, I noticed, of course, with my mediumship, it's changing all the time. Um, when I do this work, I used to see the people on the other side. That's been taken away for some reason. I feel them and I hear them. I will hear the words, but now something else is happening also. Um, Ever since I got my dog, all right, I have a great little dog, um, and I studied lots of, I'm close with animals, animals on the other side, um, I can feel them, not just the animals themselves, but what kind of breed they are or uh, what color they are. And also something else has recently happened with my work is now the medical diagnosis is, is also happening. I guess it's the progression, and after 17 years, I still call myself a student, okay, and, I'll, and like all of us, we're all students here, the gifts, the abilities are changing and changing, and that's exactly, and I talk about this too, about the soul, Lilu. My, my, everyone says to me, John, what's my purpose? Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, usually they ask me that on a radio show, and they want that in, in 60 seconds, that you answer. You must be a psychic, because I was going to ask you that question. Right, so... <laughs> That's why we're doing this. The soul, the purpose of the soul is not for me to be a medium or to you to be a host of this show or to be the president or to be a mom, a dad. The, you can hear the uh, ambulance going yeah. by. Okay. That makes it real. <laughs> yes. The purpose of the soul is to be all that you can be, a divine being from God using your gifts, talents, and abilities. So my uh, my sole purpose is to be all that I can be, a spiritual being with unlimited potential here and to help as many people as I can or that we can. But I use my gift, talent, or ability of mediumship to help me be all that I can be. Just like you, Lilu, your gifts of doing your creative work, okay? Aren't you an artist? No, but uh, of some kind if you want through yes, videos. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so using this ability that you have to... Um, to help you be all that you can be, helping people, you are living your purpose. You're being all that you can be by by being an unlimited uh, spiritual being, and you're helping a lot of people. So you are living your purpose. Clearly, I feel that. But how about for people that are really wanting to discover their soul purpose? I know you wrote this wonderful book, The Power of the Soul. But would you have some tips for them to 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 find that essence? Do they have to go quiet? Do they have to go in nature? Do they have to spend more time with themselves to breathe? What is your best recommendation? Well, um, no matter what teacher over the centuries, everyone talks about meditation. And what's sad is we're in a society, like I keep saying, everything is go, 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 fast, fast, fast. Some people say they don't have five minutes to take for themselves. And I think that's sad. If you can't take five minutes in the morning or when you get home just to go in, 
You don't have to chant. You don't have to light an incense. Okay, that's all helpful. But if people could just take five minutes to go in, um, just, just to go quiet and follow your breath in for five minutes, it's a good way to tap into your soul. And remember, you are a soul that comes with a body, not a body that comes with the soul. And your soul is going to, your soul, some people say to me, uh, Lilu, I don't know, I, what I, I don't like my job and I don't know where I'm, I, I want to go. And I tell, I tell them, what does your soul want? Ask your soul, please, show me the synchronistic events that will lead me to what I'm supposed to be doing. And people, someone may get a book, a book given to them. Someone may meet a certain person. You might hear the same subject twice in the same hour, uh, someone repeating things. You might feel an intuitive pull. You might get a wake-up call. So your soul, it is, is trying. So you have to always say, I am a soul. I am a soul. I am a soul. It, it helps bring you back in. But in your soul, follow the synchronistic events. Not every falling leaf you see is going to be a synchronistic event, okay? But when you ask God or the universe, your soul, please show me the synchronistic signs of what I'm supposed to be doing or where you want me to go. But please let me know it's a synchronistic sign. And once you start noticing the signs, it gets easier and easier and easier um, for the signs to be shown to you. Because mm, it doesn't always make sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. There was one gentleman, um, and I talk about this in the book, he got a new job out of state. And he, the kids just started school. The wife started a new job. And he got a great opportunity out of state. So he, he was driving in the car one day, and he kept saying, how am I going to tell my family, should we move? But the kids started school. I don't want to take them out. My wife will be upset. But this job is so important. It will help us so much. Just when he said that, um, there was a bus that went by. And you know the product Nike, right? It has mm -hmm. that. Okay. Just do it. That, exactly. Just when he was thinking that, should I do this? He looks up, and there was the, the, a billboard right beside him said, just do it. See, so there's signs all the times. And there's signs from people from the other side, too, that when they're trying to get your attention. Um, you're, you could be thinking of your mom who's passed away, and you turn on the radio, there's her favorite song. You could be thinking of your dad, and another truck goes by with his name on it. There's many, many ways, synchronistic events. So people on the other side, they also can use synchronistic events to get your attention. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you have a... Uh would you, would you, no, I wanted to ask you something else before asking you for the last message that you have for us. Would you say that our, it's predetermined all this? Um, I believe some things, like I said, I believe, this is my belief. I believe that in life, you're going to, you're, you're meant, you, you go from point A to point B. Now, Lilu, do you ever know those people? I mean, even kids, some kids know what they want to be when they grow up and they become them. Some people go from point A to point B with no problem. I believe you're gonna to get to your point B, whatever it is, whatever that destination is. But some people meander different roads to get there, like me. I don't know about you, but I had no plans to be a medium or an author or a radio host or being on television. I didn't. I mean, one thing led to another. I pushed this work away, and I gotta keep telling you, I kept pushing this work away. My soul kept opening up opportunities, opening opportunities, opening opportunities with the people coming in and I mean getting the visa to go over to Europe to stay there and to my work closing, my soul opened up for me and I finally gave in and said, okay, if I'm supposed to be d doing this, then let it keep happening. And it did. And I didn't just quit my day job. I did not just quit my day job. I had a day job for nine years before I started doing this work. I was tired emotionally, physically, mentally, psychically. I had to make that decision. Uh, synchronistic people people started coming into my life to help me with that situation and I finally been doing it for full time so follow your soul follow the signs the dreams and intuition and the synchronistic events and it's like you have them the full support it comes from Absol everywhere absolutely and you have to realize too I don't care how much meditation you do how many incense you light how much work you do spiritually but if your mind your brain is still saying Oh, I'll try this, but I don't know if it's going to work. Or if this, or if you're thinking I'm not good enough, I'm too old to do this. Uh, what will other people think of me? It's not going to happen. I don't care how much spiritual work you do. If you don't clear it up here, because you know that things repeat, that we repeat uh, programs over and over again. If you have a bad relationship, some people have it over and over because they haven't changed their thought. Because all thought creates reality. So you have to also work on the thought that's going through your head. 
And I had to fight that too. Am I good enough to do this work? What will people think of me? I let go of the judgment. I let go of the psychological slavery that my mind was playing on me. And what was the, the, the role of the heart in all this? Um, the, the role of the heart was the love for, I had to start loving myself, started listening, listening to my soul, basically, and let go of that mind chatter. And meditation will help you. You don't have to do it for hours, but the more you, when you start meditating, your body will start to um, twitch. Uh, you'll start thinking, how many emails do I have? What are the kids doing? It, your mind, you can never make it go quiet. You can soften it, though. You can soften that inner voice. I mean, that voice, that chatter in your head. And it gets easier and easier. Would you have a last message for all of us listening right now? Well, for the people who say, well, I don't know what my purpose is. What did you love doing as a child? What are you, what are you doing when time flies? Like this interview, okay? Milu, it's fly, it flew by. Mm. What are you doing when time flies? What books are you reading? Okay? Um, and that, is, that helps you. Go back to what you wanted to be as a kid. What are you doing? Those are little clues. And then always remember that you are a soul that comes with the body, not a body that comes with the soul. And ask your soul, what would my soul want me to do? And that's a good start. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you very oh, thank much. You. This is great. <laughs> It was fun. <laughs> thank you.